All right, welcome in everyone. Gerard Romalo here in the News 3 newsroom. We have some breaking news. Governor Steve Sisolak making an announcement uh, regarding K through 12 schools. This is a live picture out of the Grant Sawyer State Building here in Las Vegas. Let's go ahead and listen in. Over the last 48 hours, we have watched it become increasingly clear that there is need for additional measures for social distancing, for containment of the virus. As a result, in coordination with the Nevada Department of Education and the district superintendents around the state, we have concluded that all of Nevada's K-12 schools will close for students starting tomorrow and will remain closed at a minimum until April 6, 2020. Schools may not reopen until the state chief medical officer evaluates a public health risk and determines it is safe for each school district to reopen. However, we will continue to be in constant contact with superintendents, teachers, and parents and will provide follow-up information on the timeline as it becomes available. I want to emphasize that this difficult decision was made in coordination with education leaders, your district superintendents, and public health officials across the state. I realize that this will call hardship, cause hardships and complications for our families, our students, and our school staffs. I assure you, we have not reached this decision lightly. We are a state with shift workers who are employed in our largest industries of gaming and tourism. These workers have unique challenges that aren't faced by parents and guardians in the school districts in other states, particularly when it comes to child care. That's why it's critical that each school district across the state has the flexibility to implement plans that are tailored to their unique student population. The Nevada Department of Education, under the leadership of Superintendent Joan Ebert, will work with districts and empower them to support their communities, including students, staff, and families, as this situation develops. That planning with the leadership of our superintendents will include food security plans for our students most in need and academic continuity so that children can continue to learn while outside the school walls. I would also encourage all of our employers to provide flexible and special scheduling considerations for employees with school-aged children as their families work through this process. I am confident our school superintendents with the help from Nevada Department of Education, local government, and not-for-profit organizations will work diligently and collaboratively with principals, teachers, support staff to find creative and innovative solutions to make sure our students are served well during this time. Please look out for more information from your schools and district leaders during this transition. There will be more guidelines on school closures forthcoming and other decisions we're making at a briefing that we're holding today at 6 p.m. As always, I want to remind Nevada that the best way to protect yourself and your family and spread the spread of the virus is to take the following precautions. Wash your hands, avoid contact with people who are sick, clean and disinfect frequently, cough into your elbow, and if you're sick, stay home. For a full list of frequently asked questions and tips, please visit your local health authority's website, the CDC, or the Nevada State Division of Public and Behavioral Health. You can also visit the newly formed Nevada Health Response website, which was created specifically to provide information around COVID-19 at nvhealthresponsenv.gov. That's nvhealthresponse.nv.gov. Thank you. Nevada is a unique state. We are different than any other state, but we are tougher than any other state. We will get through this together. Now, I've got Superintendent Jar with me, and we have to take a few questions. We're talking all schools, K through 12, public, charter, and private. What happened between Friday and today to make the decision different? This is a constantly evolving situation that we're dealing with as we get more data from medical health experts and our uh, education experts. We've arrived at this decision today. Are you, are you considering other measures in terms of restricting large gatherings, bars, restaurants? This press conference right now deals exclusively with K through 12 education. We're having another one at 6 o'clock to answer all of those questions. Anybody else? Is there a plan to pay 
pay support professionals, substitutes, teachers, everybody in place. Is there what? A plan to pay CCSD employees, also employees in place. Well, first of all, thank you, Governor, um, for your leadership. And, and to answer your question, we're going to follow collective bargaining agreement contracts. We've been in touch. I've been in touch with our partner, CCA, Kasapi, ESCA as well. Um, so that is our plan moving forward. So will they be getting paid or not getting paid? They will be getting paid. Our licensed educators, our administrators, and our support professional police officers are under collective bargaining agreement. And since we are going to be in school now, are you going to be adding days at the end of the school year to make up for these days that are missing? That's part of the conversation that we have been having with our state superintendent um, and what we do. This is. You know, I, I really appreciate the governor. This is unprecedented waters for us that we're dealing with. So conversations with the state too, and also with our federal partners. So more to come. How will you overcome the obstacle of um, some families perhaps not having internet connection when it comes to education at this time? As a school system, um, we don't have the capacity right now to be able to go into an online learning opportunity, something that we'd like to get to, but not ready. We have plans, as the governor mentioned, some of the things that's all different for the 17 counties. Uh, we'll work with the state superintendent and we have our plans that we will enact immediately. Thanks, More everyone. To come. Thanks, Thank you. We'll be back at 6 o'clock with more proposals and to answer more questions. Thank you all very much for being here. All right, if you are just joining us, uh, Gerard Romalo here in the News 3 Newsroom. We've been listening to Governor Steve Sisolak along with the uh, superintendent of the Clark County School District, Jesus Jara, uh, where they have just announced that all public, charter, and private schools will be closed effective tomorrow. This is for K-12 through education, and this, of course, due to the COVID-19, the coronavirus uh, scare issue that we are all dealing with. This is out of an abundance of precaution. Uh, state officers will be uh, reopening schools on April 6, but that is going to be taken on a case by case basis once a health assessment is made. The governor did uh, say that he wants um, and the state want to provide continuity for children as much as possible. Uh, the ability for them to continue to learn uh, during this period where they will not have traditional in classroom classes. Uh,